Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Wa nustanna bi sunnati lahi ila yawm al-deed. Amma ba'd. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you all for having me. Thank you all for welcoming me. It is always a pleasure once again to embrace, uh, embrace your community, grace your stage. I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses it for me and for all of you. Allahumma ameen. So the topic I've chosen for this night or tonight's uh, presentation is why our iman decreases. Why do we go through that? How does it happen? What does the Quran have to say or teach us in terms of why we lose our Iman or even our Iman simply goes on an all-time low? What are some of the symptoms and how we cure them? And I have to tell you the reason why I chose this subject is in context of what is happening in the world today. Uh, obviously starting with Palestine and the crisis there. And it is not obviously, it is not getting any easier, but the effects of the crisis, it trickles on to the rest of the Ummah and Muslims all over the world. The Muslims who go to school and universities and colleges, they're being affected because of their stance or their voice about whether it be the Palestinian issue or quote unquote any Muslim political issue in the world today. They are ostracized, they are marginalized, they are targeted, they are beaten, they are discriminated against, uh, you name it. And if you're not cautious, that can take a burden or toll on your faith. Can you imagine this, right? You watch a video online of what is happening in the city of Rafah right now in Palestine, right? and you watch the ongoing genocide and slaughter that takes place each and every day, every hour. And after you watch a video and you see what's happening there at this very second and moment, then you get an invitation to go out for dinner. It can't help, but there's a part of you that questions, man, subhanAllah, look what they're going through, but I got this invitation and I need to go out for dinner. Or you have like some kind of social event. And it's really tricky. If you don't know how to do this, it's very tricky to balance how you maintain faith in Allah and how you maintain faith in this deed. And at the same time, watching everything going the opposite direction. You have faith in Allah that Allah will protect us, that Allah will provide for us and that Allah will keep us safe. But then when you look at reality, you see something very different. Here's the problem. The problem is if it affects your Iman, one of two things will happen. Either your Iman will increase in your love and reliance to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, or you will start to, jazakallah, or you will start to lose your Iman. Because it's very easy. I meet Muslims like this all the time, all the time. I hate to say it, but I meet more and more of them every now and then who question, why would Allah do it? What's the point? How is this good? How is this an extension of Allah's mercy? Like these kinds of questions. So we're going to try to answer some of them. You know, the challenge of preparing a subject like this is finding which ayah to choose. Initially, I had verse number 16 in uh, Surah Al-Hadid. But then I decided not to go there and sort of retract and go back a couple verses to verse number 14 in Surah Al-Hadid. So verse number 14 sounds like this. Yunadunahum, qala Allahu ta'ala, yunadunahum alam nakum ma'akum. Qalu bala walakinnakum fatantum anfusakum. This is number one. Watarabbastum. This is number two. وَارْتَبْتُمْ وَغَرَّتْكُمُ الْأَمَانِي Number three and number four. حَتَّى جَاءَ أَمْرُ اللَّهِ وَغَرَّكُمْ بِاللَّهِ الْغَرُورِ Okay, listen to the translation. If you want to know step by step how Qur'an teaches us and reminds us this is how you're going to lose your Iman, it happens in four stages. Okay, 
four stages. Before we get to the four, you got to go to the beginning of the ayah. Allah says, Yunadunahum. They call out for them. Here's what happened. On the day of judgment, there will be a wall that is brought in front of the believers. This wall will obviously have two sides. One side of the wall and the other side of the wall will be two groups of people that came from one group. Let me say that again. It's one group and they split into two. This one group initially were all believers. And then the group split with this wall and now you have one side of the wall which is the believers and the other side of the wall are not believers anymore. Now they are called munafiqun. Everybody knows what munafiqun is, right? The hypocrites. So your first reminder is this. Your first point to think about why somebody loses their faith. Number one, you weren't honest about the deen to begin with. You did not have sincerity in this religion. You know, this religion, it will never ever benefit you, work for you, help you. It would never, you will never see the effects of the deen. You will never see the fruit of this religion unless you have sincerity. What's sincerity, students? Sincerity literally means, literally comes from the word ikhlas, akhlasa. Ikhlas means to separate and akhlasa is referring to a special group that is unique. Nobody is like them. They do things differently, they talk differently, they act, they walk, they live completely different. That's the akhlas or the ikhlas group. Then there's everybody else. This is the main ingredient that's required for you to taste Iman. If you don't have this, then you im Islam will just feel really heavy. It'll be annoying at times. Oh my God, you know, we got to wake up for Fajr at 4 a.m. You're going to start thinking this way. Your heart will start to think this way. Like waking up for Fajr in the middle of winter, you know, it's minus 40 degrees. Then you got to go and wet your arms and wet your skin. You're the only person doing this all for the sake of praying to a God, to a creator. You haven't talked to him. You didn't hear his voice. You don't see how, he's lo how he looks. There's, there's literally like no explicit or apparent communication. But you have to just trust that he's there and do this and then try to go back to sleep. And let's not talk about Ramadan. You can't go back to sleep after your Fajr. You got work, school and the whole nine yards. So you start to do that. Remember the people of Ikhlas, right? They are unique. And the way to get to Ikhlas, the way to maintain sincerity, is you have to constantly work at it. This is the biggest mistake Muslims make with sincerity. They think that if they have it, Sadaqallahu al Azim, I'm on cruise control. You know, there's a great scholar by the name of Imam al Zuhri, rahimahullah, during the third generation Tabi'un period. Imam al Zuhri reached at the level of the teachers of Bukhari. Okay? So Imam al Zuhri, a profound scholar, he was asked, how do you maintain a sincere intention? He responds, I've been trying to master it for 25 years and I still haven't mastered it yet. Okay, these are scholars telling us 25 years of their life, half the you know, years of their life, and they still can't grasp the full sincerity. So don't think that if you feel it or you have it, that it's permanent and it'll remain. You have to constantly keep feeding it. We're gonna look at how this ayah helps us to do that. So now you have this two group that they're split. One of them is calling out to the other group. The hypocrites are calling out to the mu'minun. Here's the wall, everyone. This is the wall, okay? Let's put it actually this way, it'll make more sense. On this side, 
is the believers on this side the munafiqun they're calling out yunadunahum alamnakum marakum as the ayah said weren't we with you guys just now here's your second point sometimes you might think you have it you might be convinced by your peers you're religious and you're faithful you might come to the masjid you might volunteer you might do so many things but it was all done with a lack of sincerity. You convinced yourself, you know, I am sincere. Nobody can judge me. And then your family is like, you know, dad, mom, brother, sister, whoever, you know, you're my family. Of course I know you're for real. If nobody gets you, I get you. That's all that matters. That's what society tells us. As long as you're happy with yourself, as long as you're okay with yourself, then nobody else matters. That's not an, Isla an, an Islamic discipline. You don't do that. You genuinely care and have concern about the others and what they think of you, as long as it's constructive. So these people on one side, they're like, we were just with you. We thought we were with you. We prayed beside you. Then they respond back. And they say, Qalu bala. Yeah, actually you were. But there was a problem. So they say back. Now the reason why I hold this phone case like this, the ayah prior to this says, There's a door on the side of where the believers are standing. So you see this little opening here for my phone? Pretend that's the door. There's a door. Allah put it there. Only the believers can see it. But the munafiqun want also to walk through this door. But they can't see the doorknob. They just know that there's a door there, but it's obscure to them. They can't see it with clarity. But they know that behind this door, Allah's mercy is there. But they can't open it. The believers are already on the other side. So now, these believers say, قَالُوا بَلَى وَلَكِنَّكُمْ فَتَنْتُمْ أَنفُسَكُمْ Here's the first thing they say. So we're talking about how to lose your faith. Why we lose our faith. Here is number one. Of the ayah, four things, here is number one. It is because you put fitna on yourself. This is number one. You know why this part of the ayah frightens me? Because Allah is saying, it's your fault. You did it to yourself. Don't blame nobody but you. Everybody else was trying to give you advice. All the halaqas and the lectures and the classes were advertised. You didn't show up. The brothers and sisters put it all together. You didn't show up. They had to get food, they had to do a barbecue, they had to do entertain. That's the only way they got you there. Fatantum and Fusakum, you became a fitna to yourself. Don't blame shaitan, you're the shaitan now. And I use these words intentionally because the Qur'an does it. The Qur'an tells us two types of shayateen. Shayateen al-jinni wal-ins. There are shayateen of the jinns, and there are also shayateen of people, humans. What is the shayateen of humans? It's basically people just like you and I, but they don't act and live like you and I. They live and they have adopted the habits of shayateen, which we'll come to in a second. So the first thing that Allah is telling us why we will lose our faith is you have to look at yourself. Everyone here knows. Muslims are, as a culture, we are guilty of a big problem in every community you go to. It doesn't matter anywhere in the world. You're going to, have, you're going to find this problem. Right? I've gone to 70 different countries in this world. I've seen uh, thousands of Muslim communities. They're all exactly the same. We all share the exact same problem. In the Masajid is one kind of Muslim. And that same Muslim is somebody else outside of the Masjid. You can't do that. And I'm not saying that you should be an adhkar and tasbih, even when you're like walking in the park and feeding the birds and the ducks. You just, Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, here you go ducky. No. What I'm trying to say to you is that there has to be some balance and consistency in your faith. If you love praying on time when you're in the masjid, you should also love praying on time when you're outside. 
If you love reading and listening to Quran when you're here, you should be listening to Quran while you're driving. You should be listening to Quran while you're cooking in your home. And if you're not listening to it, something should be something should be recited from your tongue. You should be doing some kind of engagement with the Quran on a consistent basis. I can't tell you how to do that. You have to know your lives and your routine and somehow, and I hate to say this, right? We have to find ways for ourselves, for Islam to accommodate us and not the other way around. We should be welcoming and accommodating what Islam gives us. But unfortunately, we live in a time where it's the opposite. Islam has to fit in our schedule or is it just not going to work? And it should be the complete opposite, the other way around. We should know that the deen is complete and we have to somehow serve the deen. So the number one thing is, you got to look at yourself and myself. Here's what happens if somebody ignores the first category. They're like, it's not me, it's just the people around me. It's not me, it's just my friends, it's my school, it's my this, it's my that, it's my community, it's my culture, it's, it's, it's a... Blame the whole planet, except themselves. Here's what's next. If you don't monitor yourself, here's the consequence. Number two. وَتَرَبَّصْتُمْ You know what tarabastum is? Tarabbasu um, is you start getting used to it. You start getting addicted to it. So, like, if young people, but even adults, right? Like, if you, like, swear all the time or you curse all the time, like, you just have this habit of swearing, and uh, you get used to it, and you're like, well, that's not a bad word to me. That's how I grew up. That's called tarabastu. It's when you become so accustomed to the thing, you can't see anything wrong anymore. So Allah is telling us, if you don't monitor yourself, if you don't watch yourself, if you don't stop, if you're writing, write this down. Because I see some of you writing. You have to stop putting yourself in situations where your Iman is constantly tested. Stop putting yourself in situations where your Iman is constantly tested. You do that, you solve half of your problems. You know, every sheikh and imam, especially growing up in the West here, we have a similar story. Back in the days, you know, we, some would have gone to clubs, some would have been listening to music. I know one sheikh that used to be like a very prominent DJ, right? Very prominent, well known, had his own website, everything. We're talking like 20, 30 years ago, when websites really wasn't a thing. But he was very established, made thousands of dollars a night, money was just flowing. And you know, these are shuyukh now. These are du'a, these are people traveling the world, memorize the Qur'an, preaching and teaching the deen. You know, if they had gotten used to it and never stopped to say, look at myself now, what is it am I doing? And they kept on going back to those places, kept the same friends, so those of you who ask me this question, right? You ask me like, if I have like friends that are bad influences in my life, what should I do? What's the answer? Goodbye. Salam alaykum. If, if salam doesn't work, just delete them. That's it. People's feelings might hurt. They might get offended. But you're not the only friend on this planet. You'll be replaced very quickly. Yeah, it might hurt for a little bit. Then I cry, why aren't you coming back to us? We used to drink all the time. We used to do this all the time. We used to go out all the time. We used to just chill all the time. We used to make TikToks day and night. You're my dancing buddy. Everything. Just stop. Just cut it off. Some things, don't make it complicated. Just, just do it and that's it. You know, like one person asked me, like, I need to pray and concentrate in my salah. What should I do? Please. I can't concentrate. What do you want me to say to you? Just keep praying and slowly keep cl cleansing your heart and your mind. Keep purifying. Eventually, it becomes clearer and you focus more. Just stick with it. You think that all the companions, the first time they prayed their first rak'ah, you think they were crying in salah at their first salah that they ever prayed when they converted or reverted from whatever they were to being Muslim. When Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu 
accepted Islam, his first salah, you think he was crying? But by the time he died, he cried so much in prayer, they left these permanent tear stains all across his cheek. And that's how he died, radiallahu anhu. That didn't start because of, you know, a couple of salahs in the beginning. That's a lifetime commitment of consistency. No matter how hard it was, battle of Badr, battle of Uhud, battle of this, battle of that, fitna, being um, persecuted and targeted, killed, every known threat still, when salah time came, they just prayed. That's why we have a salah of, you know, a salah that you pray during war. Like, do you know, if you studied basic fiqh, you would know there's a prayer that you pray when you're in the middle of the battle, that you can have an imam and a jama'ah together, and you can actually do a jama'ah prayer whilst you're engaged in battle. The imam will rotate with the others. Every single ruku' and sujood and rak'ah is a different imam. So one is engaged in battle, while the other one is leading, and that's how it rotates. Consistency. You think those companions, when they're in the middle of that battle, they're crying, Ya Allah, you know. No, it's, they're also conscious of what's happening in front of them, I and mean, behind them, they're aware. The consistency is the most important. Now let's say you get addicted, you get used to something, and you're like, this is just the way I am. Here's number three. This is where it becomes like, very difficult to turn your life around. So, you saw that you put yourself in these situations, but ignored that. So number two, you got used to it. Number three, now you've gotten so addicted, so used to it, it becomes a part of you. You see, it's one thing. When a habit is a habit, but it's not you. You know, people will say, I have the habit of just getting angry, but I'm not a terrible person. I have a habit of losing my patience, but I don't like snap and yell at people. I don't do that. I'm working on it. Wartabtum is when it's become you, where everybody says, yeah, watch out for, you see that brother, you see that sister? Man, don't ever get him ticked off. Because you don't want to see how they act when they're upset. That person. That's called wartabtum. So Iman continues to decline. Now it's at a place where it's almost impossible. Can you imagine? And I don't, like, I don't mean this personally. I'm just speaking to you from the ayah. So please don't take this personally, okay? This is the ulama when they explain this ayah. This is not for me. The scholars of tafsir, Imam al-Qurtabi. I don't know how many of you speak Arabic, but it's an Arabic tafsir that I go to for all of my explanations. Imam al-Qurtabi, rahimahullah, when he explains this ayah, he says, wartabtum is most common with the elderly people the elderly Muslims who grew up a certain way and they're married into a habit that they just are refused to let go. They don't want to let go of it. Let me give you an example, a really simple example. You can obviously see the way that I'm dressed, right? Very rarely do I wear something on my head. And it's not because I don't like it, it's just because I believe, I hope you do it as well, if the Prophet ﷺ was here, and he saw me and you without something on our, he would still be pleased with the way we were dressed. He would still be pleased. And in addition to that, when you study the seerah, you see companions and the Prophet and so on, several times throughout his life, didn't do that. There were times he would be in the marketplace with nothing on his head. Right? He would be engaged with the companions. He would even pray when he was in the state of ihram with nothing on his head. And people just argue all the time, you know, no, 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 this is how I grew up, this is how the imam should look, and, 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 and. You see, when you get to that stage where even the trivial things bother you, that's what tabtum. Allah is telling you and I, you have to break out of that. The deen does not work based on what you're comfortable with. It has a set of principles. You have to jump on that. You have to alter. You have to modify. You have to learn. You have to get accustomed to. That's what tabtum in the ayah. It's like you've gotten to a place now where nobody can give you advice. 
You're not willing to listen to nobody unless they agree with you. We hear that all the time. And finally, when all is said and done, you have these three stages. فَتَنْتُمْ أَنفُسَكُمْ تَرَبَّصْتُمْ وَارْتَبْتُمْ All these three, no attention. Here's where it just, only Allah can help you. وَغَرَّتْكُمُ الْأَمَانِي حَتَّى جَاءَ أَمْرُ اللَّهِ now you will live your life convinced this is who I am, this is what Allah wants, and, and you live like that to your death. Some people, some Muslims, right, they will wake up, you know, pray Fajr whenever, whatever they wake up, they'll just pray. Then they'll go about their day, brush your teeth, have breakfast, go to school, go to work, come home, do it all again the next day. Friday comes home, TGIF, right, thank God it's Friday. Chill, relax, go out, do your thing. Saturday, Sunday, chill. Brothers, sister, yo, what are you guys doing? Let's go do something, let's go, pro, let's go play ball, and, 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 and Monday, start all over again. Then you die. That becomes your whole life. It's devastating. It's really sad. That's why young people, the young students here, please listen to me carefully. Please listen to me carefully. If you ignore everything I have said, just this is my last couple sentences and I'm done. Please listen to this carefully, okay? You have to find more purpose in your life than just doing things that make you feel good. So if it's just fun, if it's just games, if it's just friends, if it's just chilling, if it's just, just doing whatever, I can't go to the masjid unless they have, quote unquote, a kid thing to do, or a teen stuff to do, or for young adults. Billy, you know something, brothers and sisters, without even asking your administration, I can guarantee you that those who built this masjid did not build it thinking we're just going to have a teen type atmosphere as well. They thought for the whole community, they didn't put this group in a category, this group in a category, that they just put the whole community together at one level, which is how the Sahabas would do it. But as time progressed, they realized, wait a minute, unless we have a nice this or that, or we change it up, or we have some fun, that's, they're not coming. You gotta get out of that mentality. If you have that, you've gotta break that. And you've gotta appreciate ilm and knowledge wherever it is. The last thing that I will say to you is These are things that people will live with and they will become deceived. They will think like, you know, life is just this way. I live in Canada or in America or wherever, like that's just the way we are. Like it's, it's supposed to be fun. The deed is supposed to, we're not supposed to be just all serious all the time. Nobody is saying that. Nobody smiled more than the Prophet ﷺ, daily. Imagine he's at a marketplace, he's like at a store and he's like this. And he's just a constant smile. So much so that one of the companions selling behind the table, behind the counter, he's selling whatever he's selling, right? And he looks at the Prophet ﷺ and he says, I forgot why he came because I got lost in his smile. Like I just stopped there and I just started staring at his beautiful teeth and his smile because that's just how the Prophet ﷺ was. Just constantly smiling day, night, all the time. So this deen is a deen that is pleasant, that is welcoming, that is happy, happy. But at the same time, it requires you and I to be very critical of ourselves. So four things, look at yourself. That's the first thing Allah says, you did it, it's your fault, right? Nothing happened, you made the choice, you went there, you listened to that, you tasted this, you talked about that, you fell into this, you drove there, you sat there, you participate. You, 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 that's fatantum and fusakum. Number two, if you don't take care of that and be conscious of it, then you're gonna start building this habit where this is nice, I like it, it's, it's pretty good, enjoy it. If you don't address that, then number three, then it becomes like addicted. Oh my God, it's been so long, I need to dot, 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 dot. If you don't address that, then the, the fourth is the tragic one. It's the tragedy of Iman, where it just becomes a part of you. Not even shaitan can tell you that it's wrong. It's just a part of you. And that's a place no one wants to be. I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects us and keeps our iman and our faith consistent in a way he's pleased with. Allahumma ameen. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow these ayah to be for us, not against us in this world and in the akhirah. Allahumma ameen. So I will pause there. Wa akhiru da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.
We've got about 10 minutes or so. So if you have any questions, by all means, inshallah, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum.